Okay, hey everybody, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. I'm Brett, your host from Moonstream Crypto. And so we're going to dive into some news, answer some questions, go over some of these uh, indicators, see it's nice bullish signals here. Question is, does it hold? Does it keep going higher? And uh, we'll dive into that. I wanted to start with the news. Um, but first, we had a question that came in. And then uh, we'll jump back over these news here. So i uh, got a lot to unpack here. The uh, first the uh, first thing I want to talk about when we come back is the Grayscale. What's going on with Grayscale and the ETFs? Uh, so I have Jerry here says, I'm just wondering if it's more probable in the short term to test the low to mid-30s. Yes, I think so. And I've been saying that for some time now. And uh, we cover that uh, in more detail in our M3 crypto class tomorrow. Um, that's a little bit more in depth, but uh, the... Let's see. So, well, here's the thing. The 49K, 50K is the golden pocket, the Fibonacci golden pocket. We've been saying it's going to go there for weeks, if not longer. And that's just a simple retracement from the prior high to the prior cycle low. And here's a good chart. Here, I'll just pull this up for a minute uh, showing that. So this little sliver right here and uh, is that Fibonacci golden pocket. So if we take the uh, from the market cycle high back here in November 2021, when I was originally telling people to get into cash and out of the market and all the way to, to the low, which I also forecast uh, eight, eight months, five months before that, we go to 16 fives, what I said. So if we do that and we send it out, the um, golden pockets right between this 48,000 500, 49,000 to 50,000. So we've been watching this for some time now. Now this is a uh, monthly chart. And very curious candle we're going to talk about here because it's totally reverted. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute because uh, we had this big, very ominous looking shooting star on the monthly chart that was this big red inverted shooting star, like an inverted hammer, uh, which would have been very bearish. So we've, we've pushed higher in the green, but this is still in a decision candle. We'll come back to that. But very important we watch to see how the weekly close is this Thursday. So back to your comment though, this uh, sliver here, we saw it push right up to that 48.5, 49K on some exchanges and then rapidly pulled back. I was on a coaching call with somebody and we watched that in real time. We were watching the one hour chart and then Bitcoin just shot right up and sold right off. And um, I knew that that was going to come back down because there was a lot of sell pressure up in that region. And um, we, you know, was not unexpected at all. So the question here is, do we pull back down? And you can see I have that drawn here, Jerry, this uh, lower 32s. We need to, I think we need to retest that 32K level. So we're going to come back to that and see what our indicators show after we uh, dive through the news. I like to do the news first, kind of put a frame around everything so everyone knows the information that we're taking it from the charts has some more context. It's very important to do that. So um, the big question mark here is how low do we go? And do we push up again to the 49.50K region and then pull back? Do we pull back farther and then go higher? That is impossible to know. And so I want a little help from our friends at the news. But as I always say, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. I've been saying that for a decade. And um, uh, curiously, other people are starting to catch on. I did not invent that phrase, by the way, you guys. So uh, anyway, it's a good one. All right, let's jump over to the uh, the news and we'll come back to that comment. And uh, Jerry, so stick around. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to this. We've doubled our subscribers. Uh, we roll it up to 150, you guys. Woohoo. I think it's time to start live streaming these at some point. But uh, yeah, we're going to do more of these and also some uh, short uh, videos to unpack here, kind of give you some more content so that uh, you guys get more out of these videos. But at any rate, here's, uh, let's see, some news I found on Crypto Panic. This is a good aggregator of news here. And so come back to that. But this is something actually I found on Google. Bitcoin's losing streak is over, they're saying, as grays grayscale ATF outflows fall below 200 million. Those of you that don't know what happened, so, of course, you know, this was all very quiet, hush-hush among the people that knew what I'm sure that some of the smart money and the whales had this information, but they didn't least release it out to the public because even though I had these charts strong and this trend channel here, and I was very highly confident that it would reject at the upper trend channel because of the golden pocket and because of the upper trend channel top, even though I knew that, there was still doubt because we didn't know. It was the reverse of FUD. It was FOMO almost. Instead of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, it was FOMO, uncertainty, and doubt. And I'll just let someone else in here. So if we replace the F in FUD with F for FOMO, the FOMO was people were saying, 
that we might have this giant Omega candle. And certainly if the ETFs like BlackRock, Fidelity, Van Ag, Vanguard, et cetera, had come and dumped billions of dollars into the ETFs right away, then that could have uh, that could have happened. But as we know, what really happened is they sort of stayed in the sidelines. Uh, BlackRock was buying, Fidelity buying. Um, however, Grayscale, a lot of their users were selling and redeeming uh, the um, the uh, the trust that they had. It wasn't the long-term holders, actually, because they would not want to take the tax loss. This is a theory anyway. And Grayscale didn't drop its rates because it thought and reasoned that its long-term holders wouldn't want to take the, t the capital, the short-term capital gains tax or even capital gains at all. Well, um, you know, there were still two billion in outflows. There was a billion, a billion in outflows and they continued from the users wanting to get lower fees. And the thing is this, and so now that the sell pressure has uh, has, has mostly gone, uh, we were ready to see those inflows come back in. And so there's a couple of things at play here. We touched on it last week in our retire rich classes, but essentially um, there's something called mark to market. So essentially in the stock market and uh, these ETFs, you can't take out, you can't sell and buy the same security back within, I think, seven days for uh, wash sale rules. And that's because people would used to take tax loss harvesting and then buy the thing back again. And so basically that money that came out of GBTC is still floating around somewhere. They're probably likely waiting for two things for that seven day window to go away, but also to see if we do come back and uh, so they can buy the dip. And so we had a question earlier about, do we come in a low 32s? I think so. That's my read. Now I reserve the right to be wrong. And in this case, the big wild card is when does BlackRock and the big players come in with a big move? And uh, we just have to watch the charts and see what's happening. Okay. So what I believe will happen is we'll push up here again around 45K and we'll reject again and we'll come back down into these, these ranges. And that could be 38K. We barely touched it back in here. We didn't quite get there. We got to about 38.6 on Binance. I think that was the lowest. Uh, I, I think for us to go higher where Bitcoin needs to go this cycle, I think we need to come down and test these lower regions of the trend channel. And it may not get to 32K, but we have this very significant trend line support resistance level goes all the way back to November of 2020, you guys. So this is very important that we're aware of that. I think if it does come back down again, it will be a flash. It'll be a wick. It'll come down and touch, and then it's going to skyrocket. So the real candle body likely will hold in this channel, if we come down to let's say 33, 5, 34, and it wicks down, or maybe it just comes down in this region a little bit, I think that that's the best time to be kind of buying in. We'll have some more nuances to that. Uh, obviously, uh, in tomorrow's class, we uh, unpack that a little bit deeper. So in this class, uh, we talk about our indicators. And uh, in this case, we're showing overbought on this weekly time frame on our TSI. And we also had an ERI, which is our early reversal indicator back here. That was two weeks before the big pump up and the rejection up here. So I have a green check mark because it touched my targets exactly. Uh, it wasn't rocket science, you guys, anybody. A lot of people, we had Fibonacci's on this. I think it was one of the earlier people to be uh, talking about it. But uh, at any rate, um, anyways, it's going to cat. Let's, uh, let's jump over. Um, not that you'd want to do that. Let's jump over back to the news here. That is not it. Uh, so, <clears throat> pardon me, I need to get to this chart here. And there we go. So, basically, uh, what we're talking about uh, is where did the news go, you guys. I'm sorry, I blew it. There we go. So, uh, losing streak over grayscale ETF outflows fall below 200 million. That just means that the sell pressure is waning and the majority of sell pressure is gone. And so, at these inflection points, we're just waiting for a catalyst, waiting for the buyers to step back in. And so, here we see. 49k again forecast that perfectly and uh nailed it so basically i'm going to just skim this we don't read all of it uh grayscale gbtc again converting it into an etf and uh had 20 billion in assets they had 20 billion and so essentially yeah and the other thing that dropped the market price by the way was that ftx had a lot of gbtc and they sold a billion dollars of their uh of their uh, grayscale. Okay. And so grayscale itself lost 5 billion since ETFs were announced, but also FTX, uh, had also was part of that. Okay. I heard they had a billion outflows. So like, this is just the ebb and flow of the markets, you guys, nothing to be afraid of, 
But I would, um, you know, the big question is, and you're all here for the one big question, do we go higher here? Or do we go lower? I think it's dangerous to be going all in. I know some uh, YouTubers are diving back into this market. Um, I think it's it would be good and prudent to be either in, but ready to sell half at a moment's notice or be half invested, not financial advice. But anyway, we'll, we'll unpack that a little bit more. So uh, let's see, January 23rd, about a week ago, Grayscale averaging 500 million daily of outflows. So, you know, um, but this article says that it's uh, it's waned. And this is a GBTC ETF conversions, but um, that is not as many. Uh, there's definitely money flowing out because Grayscale is charging one and a half percent fees, management fees, whereas you've got other ones that are like 0.05, 0.02%. And that's going to move a lot of money out of the you know way because here's why. ETFs are usually one leader and this battle for who that market leader is usually plays out the first year of ETFs are open. Uh, they are going for the jugular. They're all competing and jumping over each other. Uh, they all have their registered investment advisors on the phone calling up their older demographic who previously uh, was probably not buying Bitcoin. And they're saying, hey, it's time to buy Bitcoin. And we have an ETF now. So that's what's happening and once they accumulate the money, or as they do, they'll start deploying it. I just think um, the market structure really is due to pull back some more. So we have to see what happens. All right, let's see. <clears throat> JP Morgan, um, you know, don't listen to anything, JP Morgan. I, I won't say don't listen, but uh, they, uh, they're they not to be trusted. Uh, so continued downward pressure, uh, Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan says, let's just take a quick look at the uh, BlackRock issuer. And so uh, they've got net assets of the IBIT. I have been tracking the IBIT in the charts and it was starting to tick higher. We'll look at that in tomorrow's class. Uh, we have, um, this is interesting, but wait, Fidelity, I'm sure is, is second. So, okay. So these are just in some random order, not even, uh, uh, not even. So you have 2.4 billion on BlackRock. Fidelity is just behind him at 2.2 billion. And then the rest of these guys, they're in the millions, right? So uh, let's see. Grayscale, of course, uh, had had uh, 21 billion. I don't think they still do. Not really worth unpacking that anymore. So, all right, we've got that covered. What else do we have? <clears throat> Crypto news here. This is uh, okay. Uh, we already covered that. Something about a Trump NFT. We don't need to look at that. Um, this is a radar that I created, by the way. And it's interesting. So the uh, BTC1... Um, all right. And the I bit here is up about uh, just under a percent. So that's interesting. And uh, Bitcoin futures, uh, the CME of futures uh, up a bit, but we already know that with Bitcoin up. Okay. So anyway, uh, Baron's not much to see there. The daily hodl. Let's see. This is two things. Tokenization is going to be huge. This is going to be a big narrative this year. And uh, we are putting together a watch list uh, in our inner circle there for uh, these emerging markets. And so, um, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, you want to find out any more about our other things that we do here at Moonstream, you can just go over to uh, moonstream.io and you can learn all about it. We've got uh, all kinds of classes for beginners, intermediates. In the trading indicators, which we talk about today, we have the M3 Active Trader class tomorrow, our Retire Rich uh, class Thursday, and also some coaching mentoring. So just so you know, and uh, let's see, Palantir, let's see, uh, Palantir, that's Peter Thiel, just listened to his audio book, Zero to One, it's excellent. Uh, he says, uh, what type of buyer could be a report for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana? Um, that might be his other co-founder. I think Peter's out for now. We'll look at that. Uh, let's see, Whales holding a lot of stable coin. We can get through the news pretty quick here this week uh, because I think the market's just kind of digesting things still. Um, something about altcoin opportunities. This guy's pretty smart. Uh, and we'll come back to that. Uh, let's see. Outflows. We already covered that. Okay. So that's the daily uh, huddle. Palantir co-founder says type of buyer could be very important. Let's get, let's get our, um, big picture ironed out and then we'll wrap that around the charts with the charts for telling us. Sound good. All right. Sounds good. All right. Let me turn on my, uh, color here thing, color highlighter. And let's see. AI agents, yeah, uh, so are they talking about AI trading? That's certainly coming. The, the institutions already have AI trading. That's their market makers are advanced AIs. So uh, the um, <clears throat> this is going to be probably a little bit too uh, too down the rabbit hole. Let's not really worry about that. 
Let's see, altcoin opportunities. Certainly, everyone's interested in that. And uh, I'd like to unpack this together because that way there's no emerging news we miss. Let's see, altcoin. I mean, this is something we're already expecting. And certainly as Bitcoin rallies to new highs and money start flowing out of Bitcoin, then it starts going into Ethereum, Solana, Tier 1s, and then into the altcoins and finally into the shitcoins. So he has, uh, this guy's been talking about Wyckoff patterns on a little bit shorter scale. Certainly possible. I think one thing to uh, keep in mind, by the way, that nobody's really talking about is the typical Wyckoff pattern which we saw in the last high is this double tap, this fake out. Okay, so see this, this is called the up thrust after distribution in the Wyckoff pattern. And so that guy Pisani was arguing that uh, we have with Wyckoff accumulation here and uh, maybe seeing some distribution here. Guys, is it possible this was the market high? Highly unlikely. But um, these patterns do play out, okay? So if they pump Bitcoin back up into this golden pocket again, 50K, there's a lot of sell pressure at 50K, everybody, and uh, a lot of sell orders that we can look at. So, <clears throat> pardon me, but um, so that's really what I think. If we push up in the 49K, 50K, then... I think we we see we see February pull back down because if we uh, look at it also on a monthly time frame, you know we've had this is one two three four five green months in a row, so that's it's a not common for Bitcoin to have six green months in a row unless we're in the bull run, and that's earmarked by these big monthly green candles. We're going parabolic. We're not there yet, you guys. We're not there yet. So coming back here, we had five up months, followed by a few down months. This is coming out of the 2019 bear market and before we went up to the new highs. So I'm sure if we went out a little bit longer, we could see that. I'm not going to do that right now. But to keep that in mind, if we, especially if it looks like a spinning top here. So, uh, but the monthly close is going to be really important. If we close higher toward the high on Thursday, then then that's very interesting because that would be indicative of a blow off top here. But I just these trend channels do respect the Bollinger Bands as we draw them, the modified Bollinger Bands. You have a lot of confluence here, right? at this 49.50K and I think 50K does hit and I think that rejects. So that is kind of more my thesis is if we hit, and I have an alert on that, when we hit 50K Bitcoin, I'll be selling half of everything just to, just to wait it out. Because even on a pump, very likely that gets rejected and comes back down. So keep that, uh, keep that in mind, you guys. At least going into the halving, these trend channels can go vertical, but uh, even though I think we have a left skewed parabola on this market, I just, this is, that's my, where I'm, I'm leaning on that. And I've been mostly right. So we'll keep an eye on that. So basically uh, what he's saying here, uh, code drops as well. Trades is not, you know, you know, I don't think we'll break below 30K uh, again, either 32K, maybe dip to 30. But uh, he's saying may correct to the mid 30K range. I mean, 32K is at such an important level. I think that it's important that uh, that we um, that we touch that. We get down to that region. 30K, I don't know. But if we do, and if you have money on the side, having limit buy orders at 30K, at 32K, at 35K would be a pretty smart idea. Because this, when this happens, it's going to happen quickly. Um, and um, we'll take a look at some of the buy order blocks, although that could change next month. So it's important time to be nimble. Uh, we, are, um, we are getting very close to, uh, to all this. This is an older article. That's a week old by Ben Cowan. We'll talk about that. So um, let's see, likely to go ballistic. I think we already covered that. We had that in here twice. And um, that's a little bit later. That doesn't mean it's going to happen now. Bitcoin's going to lead this charge. Okay, so all eyes are on Bitcoin. Um, we are seeing some movement in the, the alt pairs. So a bit uh, ETH, ETH and Sol uh, against each other. So let's just see. Uh, place explosion and pattern plays out according to Glassnode founders. So here's their target. I have a picture of a beaver holding a Bitcoin. No idea, you guys. He's just getting stranger and stranger. So we have the <clears throat> interesting. This is already. Is this an older article? Because it looks like I already highlighted it. This is a week old, you guys. 
Okay. Yeah, we looked at this last week. So uh, that's old news. Let's get to some fresh news here. Wall Street's new asset will Grayscale survive the Bitcoin era. Let me go back to the homepage and uh, just make sure this is the uh, the most recent news. Um, <laughs> you know what? I always go back here to, to Crypto Panic. It's got sort of the latest news. Let's see. Uh, FTX-funded charity Effective Ventures agrees to return the donations. Not... Not a big story because we don't know them unless they got a ton of Bitcoin that they are then going to sell in the open market or OTC. But uh, <clears throat> OTC doesn't really move the market. Uh, so it only moves the market when the OTC supply runs out. That's over the counter because then buying pressure flips over to the spot market. And that is kind of the catalyst we're waiting for in the Bitcoin markets because a lot of that crypto and Bitcoin was being sold on the OTC market, the over-the-counter market by Grayscale. So the Black Rocks and Fidel Fidelity of the world were buying it up on the spot. That's why it wasn't impacting price too much. When the supply runs out on the OTC market and the demand rises, you'll be seeing the prices go up quickly in these spot traded markets. Okay, so if anyone's not clear on that, it's kind of like the old days where they had stock shares were bearer shares. So if you held the shares, they were in the safe, they were under your mattress, that was the owner. So if somebody took the bearer shares, the paper shares, they then own the stock, kind of like paper money. So with the uh, exchanges, that that's kind of on the ether. It sort of doesn't exist. You get keys, but uh, it's, uh, it's not traded. It doesn't affect the prices on the exchanges. And that's where those prices are dictated, right? So uh, over the counter is kind of like the bearer shares where they just, you know, GBTC says, hey, BlackRock, I got all these Bitcoin shares. Uh, we'll sell them to you for this much. You want them? Yep, cool. Got it. Never goes through the exchanges. Okay, so it's good to be aware of that. All right, so uh, Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin, sees, uh, let's see, Litecoin rebounds. We'll see unprecedented, unprecedented Bitcoin seizure in Germany linked to online piracy. I don't see a lot on the news, you guys. Uh, why don't we kind of just take a quick look around? But I think if there was anything, let's see, 50,000 Bitcoin piracy, it's not really that much. Well, 50,000 is pretty big. Fidelity buys 49,000. <laughs> this is funny, by the way. Uh, one, so we have two hours ago, German police sees 50,000 50, Bitcoin, <clears throat> pardon me, in a Bitcoin piracy bus. The next headline, Fidelity buys 49,000 Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's unrelated, but that's funny that it's the same uh, at the same time. Let's have a look. Uh, and then we do have an article here. All right. We, other... We've got some news playing. We don't want that news. Come back to this. And then one more here. SEC likely to prove the spot Bitcoin ETF. All right. That'll be it for the news, guys. I promise. SEC likely to prove the spot Ethereum ETFs on May 23rd. Interesting. Well, Standard Charter has been pretty accurate. They also forecasted that the Bitcoin uh, ETF would get approved. And I think that was the... Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. That was the news that was allegedly leaked early by Cointelegraph. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, and you know, what an opportune time for Cointelegraph to solve their financial woes, which they were they were having. They were lay, laying off their U.S. staff. I have on uh, high authority, they were laying off all their U.S. staff, bleeding money. So uh, they uh, kind of accidentally leaked, blamed it on the intern uh, that uh, the ETF had been approved. Bitcoin pumped. And then, of course, news came out. It was fake news. And then it dropped. Gee, I wonder if Cointelegraph's uh, owners over there in Russia... Uh, don't kill me uh, over there, the oligarchs over in Russia. But uh, hey, over there, there's no uh, recourse. So business is business. You know, leverage long Bitcoin, dump and sell short on the uh, news that was fake. Guys, it's still crypto. Be aware of that. All right. There's no uh, no police force over there. Anyway, uh, Standard Charter was right last time. So they're saying likely to prove spot Ethereum. It's, so that's interesting because a lot of people have been saying the ETH trade uh, the Bitcoin trade is dead. The ETH trade is next, but saying that the chances of them approving were far lower. I forget the reasons why. Let's see if they unpack it in this article. And now let's see. So we have Standard Charter. Uh, <clears throat> why May 23rd? And the bank predicts $4,000 ETH target if it mimics Bitcoin's pre-approval process. That would be good because it's right. It's in the 2300, 2400 range. So that'd be about a 40% rise on ETH. 
So um, that would be nice. Very, very nice. So let's see. Now, I don't know, though. We have to be very careful about consensus. And, you know, um, and then really look at this a lot closer this next time around. As in, who might have a lot of ETH that they're looking to sell into the VTF? Now, I don't think there's an um, uh, like a grayscale. And similar type of trust. So we'll have to look into that. I haven't really followed that, to be honest. So let's see. Final deadline. The first ETFs under consideration. Now, Gensler has signaled don't get too excited. Uh, because they only did it because the courts sort of forced them to do it. Otherwise, they would keep kicking the can down the road. But now that the uh, big old shark named Blackrock has its teeth in the bloody uh, part of the fish, uh, it's going to want more fish, you guys. And Blackrock, uh, we don't know who's, uh, whose strings are pulling everybody. Just keep that in mind. So you see what we're doing, though? And this is what I encourage you to, to do is building that frame around the information. That's very important. As humans, that's how we process information. A great book by Oren Claff talks about setting the frame. He's a billion-dollar hired gun. Uh, the uh, big people raising billions of dollars out in uh, Silicon Valley, they bring him in to do the hard work for him. So uh, it's, it's just a useful analogy. So we're building the frame so the information inside of it. So like when you look at a painting, the the all the little scattered dots, you know, the frame sort of sets the full picture. So that's kind of what we do here. I don't want to spend too much time on this here, but uh, it's important and uh, it's good to park it away somewhere. Okay, so I think we've uncovered most of this. How are we doing on time? We're about half an hour in, making good time. And uh, let's see, <clears throat> we have a $100,000 price prediction on the yeah, Bitcoin ETF or Bitcoin price. Yeah, I mean, that's what we thought in 2020, 2021. I've shown how I think we'll get there. I'll show well, I think we'll go to 155K and even 210K. We unpack that in detail in tomorrow's class. And again, if you are watching for the first time on YouTube, uh, please do like and subscribe. And if you'd like to know more about our Wednesday class, it's called M Stream Moonstream M3 Active Trader. And you can read all about that here where those are classes we have every week on Wednesdays. We go a lot deeper into the markets. And you also get these indicators for free, plus all these cool cheat sheets and bonuses like candlestick patterns. Uh, trading patterns and uh, just a little bit more about my background. Okay. Some uh, former and current users. And uh, this has been newly updated here. So uh, make sure and check that out. It's our highest level live training. You get access to me daily in a live signal chat. Okay. So with that in mind, out of the way. Sorry, guys. I have to clear my throat, getting over cold here. So let's jump back over. We're done with the news here, I think. And I want to get into some charts. Shall we do that? All right. All right, so let's uh, dive into the charts here. So basically, um, I want to look at a few things. And here's some coins we were looking at last week, Sui and Say and Blur, just taking a quick look at these. We will take a look at some hot movers. I did want to show and talk about this that we've been watching for quite a while now. This is this pullback range. I had this text in here, the 27% pullback, up here all the way back in uh, December of last year. Yeah, so expecting this pullback. So we're really in a consolidation range. If we uh, or look back here, 37% pullback. It was it happened back here when we created this new trend channel. And so keep in mind, 20 to 30%, even 40% pullbacks can still happen in a bullish formation. And that's what we're seeing. So we're just seeing this consolidation here. If we were to pull back 20%, we did that right in here. We did that right in here to the lower edge of this trend channel. Uh, what I'd like you to keep in mind is the opportunity levels. So here at 38K, I think is a good level. If our indicators start to turn higher, then I'll be giving the uh, signal to go back, get back in. And even if you were starting the dollar cost average with some buy limit orders in there, you know, we could still go lower, but certainly warranted at around 38K to push higher into new highs. So the, the big question mark is, do we push 50K again and then drop? Or do we come down first and then break through it? But uh, from the market structure point of view, I think it'd be healthier if we were to come down. The 20% would be right at 38K. That's why it's a likely area, you know, right back here, we had 20%. So if we were to go from the high to the low area, that's about 30% in the trend channel. If we come down and retest that important 32K level, again, when in doubt, zoom out all the way back here, 
it was strong support in the 2021 rally, came down, held support all through here, pushed up, lost, became resistance here, that 32K level, it's just so uh, critical, and then came up, acted as resistance all the way through here, it was also the midpoint of this vector candle almost, and uh, typically these will retest, all right? So I would be looking for a pullback to at least this 32K5 level, even on a WIC basis, uh, because of this all-important support resistance level. Really, we, we should see this, at some point, rebuild, uh, consolidate, and come back in this range. So it's uh, it's almost impossible to tell here. But once we start to see that direction, uh, we'll know. Currently, we're overbought on our trend strength indicator on the weekly time frame. I do like to look at it on the weekly time frame. Still bullish on the average true range, but that's a bit of a lagging indicator. I'll turn on our radar, which gives us our multi time frame outlook. So bearish on the four hour, bullish on the daily. This this is a mixed. This is mixed signals, so we are going to discount this. What I'm mostly looking at here is the trend strength indicator is, is uh, languishing a bit. And typically when we have a number of these red marks, we do come down. And let's see, CBOE exchange withdraws application to list Glo Global X spot ETF. Okay, well, Global X, uh, not really a big deal. Um, so <clears throat> what I'm suggesting, though, when we come down on the TSI, it's multiple weeks of down prices. So the trigger here is below 80. I have an alert on that. This is such a powerful indicator, you guys, and especially on the weekly time frame, because when that red comes below 80, these things tend to cycle all the way down. So we'll come back here to April of 2021. We saw that that was the market peak. It did come down and languish down here for a while. We got a bullish ERI where it went green here. We had that secondary push, that up thrust after distribution in the Wyckoff pattern, not to get too technical, everyone, but basically a, a bull trap, a bear market rally bull trap. We had, however, our, our bearish early reversal indicators. Those of you wanting to know when the next market top will be, it's going to be when our bearish ERI triggers and coincides with this red TSI going lower. It's just that accurate. So, our, you know, that's why I'm a little concerned right here. We had a bearish ERI back here and uh, this hasn't dropped below. And when these do cross down, we had all of the multiple weeks, two months of down pressure up here was the market cycle top. Same thing, bearish ERI. A TSI cross red came all the way down, had it here again, bearish ERI, and it wasn't quite in the overbought area, but once it went red below this 80 level, and we had red on the signal line. So we, we, this is not, we're not bull, I'm bearish here, you guys. I think this is a fake out. <clears throat> Have to see how the weekly charts uh, wind up. New information equals new decision. But I would not be getting too excited here, everybody. So let's jump down to the daily range and just see a daily time frame, see what that's telling us. So we certainly could have a daily push higher within this weekly context. But here's the problem. See this trend line resistance right here. This is, it's, go, it's going nowhere. So we're just stalled out. I don't know, you guys. This, uh, this to me, looks fairly bearish. Let's open up our other indicators. We're, we're, we are bullish on the daily, though. What does that tell me? It tells me we can push higher into the end of the week and reject. So, but at some point, I'm looking for that that weekly to roll over. So, when in doubt, stay out. I would be very cautious here, or trading half positions and not going all the way in because these can turn over and and turn on a dime. Let's just see back here. The green ERI within two days was back to bearish and then dropped. So, you know, there are some cases where this trend line resistance plays out and not to dry lines in the sand but this is not looking terribly strong it could push higher but i'm looking for a bit of a fake out here we do have the bull i'm sorry the, the bell on our indicators the trend indicator so when we get a key and a bell a bell is usually a buy the four kings as we call them are the eri the early reversal indicator the tsi the signal and the bell so uh, it's uh, here's the nuance with this, and the reason this isn't as strong as I would normally like to see it. This green line on the trend indicator, and by the way, uh, if you don't already have our trader success checklist, go ahead and go to moonstream.io and get this. And I think you can go to moonstream.io 
slash free checklist as a shortcut. And essentially when we're evaluating trades, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to download this and essentially we'll do it together because uh, in terms of how do we judge these, if we get a three or four out of 21, it's a buy. Is the ERI showing up a green arrow? We, we don't really have that. Let me just jump back over to this. We don't have a an ERI on the daily time frame. So let me jump back to that. We do have a rocket yesterday, you guys, though. So look at that. So we'll take a look at this in a minute. A rocket's one of our favorite indicators. But you know, look, we're stalling out. Um, we did push up here on the Fibonacci to the 50% retracement from the high to the low. Also, usually we'll retest. Uh, let me come back to that because I want to talk about this midpoint of that vector candle, however. So 44.5, that's why I'm a little worried about this 45K region will be a fake out and then we drop because that would also be the 44.5, the 45K region, it would be the 618 retracement. Okay, so essentially that golden, that shorter term golden pocket. So I don't know, guys, it's a little bit tough to read that, that rocket looks great, but we've got to close above this overhead resistance. And uh, we'll unpack that. So look, the point is, it's not always easy to read the tea leaves on these things, as we know. And uh, we've got a couple more things we can uh, look at. So basically, though, the slope of the trend indicator, I like to see that a little bit higher slope, uh, a steeper slope. So that's a bit of a nuance. So basically when weighing all of these and the fact that we're hitting resistance, we do have um, we do have a bullish TSI, but it's also at resistance. The signal line is nice and green, that's bullish. So just to go back to our example, we don't have an ERI. Is the TSI green and above 20 line? Yes, it is. As the signal line turned from green, sorry, red to green. Yes, it is. So we have two of those. I'm going to walk you through our checklist so you guys know how to use these. And I keep the right wrong chart. Which one is it? It's four tabs in, five tabs in. It's this one. So we have the signal line. Now, this is hopefully not confusing. These are powerful indicators. Each one has its own algorithms so that it's not different ways of looking at the same thing. It's finding confluence. So when we start seeing more of these in confluence, we have a stronger trader success checklist. So that's really the purpose of these classes here on uh, the, on Tuesdays. So we will look at some hot movers in a minute, but I want to make sure everyone understands, especially for our M3 members here who are using the indicators and want to learn how to use these better. So uh, what we're looking at, we've got this is green, check, signal is green. We have a key and a bell. So that's also true. Uh, so we'll hit this trend indicator showing a bell. Does the trend indicator have a green midline? So these are all true here. So now what we have is a trend score, a trading success score of four out of 21. Do you see that? This is an interactive worksheet. Again, you can go to moonstream.io and download it down at the bottom for free. And uh, and then so essentially we're looking for an overall score on these trades. Now, there's a couple of problems with this, though. It's not out of the woods. We also have that we're hitting trend line resistance up here. If we were above the uh, 21 and 50 day EMA. So there's there's bullish and bearish signs here. It's a little bit tricky. So on the one hand, we have above the 21 and 50 day EMA. So we can come down here and check another positive score. And is the candle body at support? So these are similar, but not exactly the same. So we can come back over here and say, all right, we are at support. So that's good. Bear with me because we're going to have a negative one here. Is uh, we don't have bullish engulfing, I don't believe. Did we? We did yesterday, but we're looking at today. So that uh, bullish engulfing is no a candle body at support. Yes. Uh, is the price above a rising support trend line? No, it's below resistance. It's not really a support trend line here. So in that case, we would want to uh, come down. We have a score of 6 out of 21. <clears throat> we do have a recent rocket. I'll give it that. The rocket's one of our favorite indicators that you won't find anywhere else. Essentially, it consists of a large candle body resting on an EMA or strong support with a candle body down here. Think of that as the fuse. Think as the EMA as the launch pad. When you light the fuse, it shoots up. So I am going to take note of that. The rocket is one of our favorite indicators here. And so we did have that trigger here just a couple days ago, yesterday, in fact. 
as we can see in this chart. Problem is that wick isn't very deep. So um, we're going to have, that's why I think it makes sense to be partially in the market, uh, but not uh, not fully in market at this time. Uh, we'll come back to this here and let's see. I need to have my ERI Pro on here because that's going to tell us a little bit more. <clears throat> Pardon me. And um, uh, these are not available yet. This one here, it shows this order block, uh, order uh, money flow. So let me just see if we have any of that showing up. And uh, why didn't that pop on there? Okay, took a lot of load. Yeah, a lot of data in there. So I've got to move this onto the chart, come over here, merge all my scales into one on the right, and uh, and then just to check that out. Okay, so we don't, we did have a big uh, order block money flow back here. Clearly, that was a great sign uh, signaling that that's going to go higher. I can look at it on a weekly time frame. Same kind of thing. Uh, we could even look at it lower time frame, but that's not giving us any additional data. So we can't use the buy blocks. So here's what I'm getting at. Um, and actually one thing first, turn on our Bollinger Bands because that can also affect uh, where we are. We're right in the middle of the Bollinger Bands. So the Bollinger Bands are tightening, meaning volatility is contracting. I think we stay here in this range for a couple of days, everybody, and either break higher or not. Bollinger Bands are tightening, typically precedes a bigger move. Question is which way. So we don't have any score increase on that with the Bollinger Bands. So basically, we've got a mixed radar. None of this is really helpful. The dynamic ATR is green. I'll check that. All right, so, but here's the point. We're 8 out of 21 on the buy side, but what about bearish signals? So we don't have any of these, but we do have bearish resistance. And so that's where you would get, uh, you would take one check mark off overhead resistance. So when we click on that, so our trend score is 8 out of 21. If we have short, we have overhead resistance. Click, see our score now is 7 out of 21, but that's still pretty good. That's pretty good. So hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Hey, Maria, welcome. So um, thanks for being here. So basically, hopefully that's helpful. Again, you can go to moonstream.io slash, uh, well, it's down at the bottom, but if you go to moonstream.io slash free checklist, then you can download this trade success checklist and um, play along. And some of those are uh, just standard indicators, okay? So um, there you go. All right, cool. Well, let's jump back to the charts and then we'll look into with some hot movers, try to keep the classes to about an hour. And so it's kind of inconclusive there what's going to happen on uh, on Bitcoin. So I would want to see what happens end of the day today and tomorrow. In terms of the altcoins, just take a real quick look. ETH looks pretty good. It's coming up above its 21 and 50 day EMA. Kind of a mixed radar, bearish on the uh, weekly time frame. So let's see what that looks like. But it has broken and held above prior resistance. So I'll just get rid of this black line there. I thought we might pull back and then push higher. But every time, typically when we break above these resistance levels, typically we'll come back and retest it and then go higher. So for some reason, it's uh, I got to change this to the pointer and grab this there. So basically, this is the uh, what is going on here. I need to not touch all these other ones there. That's the pattern. So now that we've broken above overhead resistance, that's what I would expect on ETH, especially with the ETH ETF potential approval. I think that's uh, worth noting. Got all kinds of lines in here. I can clean that up a little bit. I'll do that later. But uh, as far as our indicators. Let's go back to a daily. Let's see what we have. ETH looks very good here, you guys. Because so we have, we have, here's what we have. Um, we have the ERI early reversal indicator. So if we were back to the checklist, you can do this in your head by at this point. So we've got a check for that. We've got the trend strength indicator coming up, turning from red to green. Very bullish. Right here is where you typically like to get in. So ETH looking very strong. The signal line not yet going green, but the trajectory is, is solid. ETH looks like a good buy to me. Um, you know, and the way we use the indicators, by the way, and uh, if you would like to learn more about those alone, you can just go to cryptomastery.org. You can get a free month when you sign up for these. It's $97 a month for what I think are the best indicators in the entire trading game. Uh, they're very high probability, especially when these two align, the ERI and the TSI, which we're talking about today. Cryptomastery.org, you can go get a free month. If you sign up for six months, you get seven indicators. And every Tuesday, we unpack how to use those along with the Trader Success Checklist. So hopping back over to ETH, the way to do that is as more of these signals start to fire, 
add to the position. Successful traders build positions over time and they take profits along the way. Amateur traders get all excited and they go buy all at once and then they're wishy-washy on their conviction and they sell at a loss or they sell at the wrong time. So building a position is, is important. Uh, hedge fund managers are risk managers, probability managers. So what I specifically am telling you in this case, this is a great textbook example you know, the ERI triggered here. Very interesting. Do we buy yet? No. The uh, TSI turned green the next day. Do we buy yet? No. The over here, it turned green, but it hasn't gone above the 20 line. You know, that's when you can make that determination. But really, the buy candle is today on ETH because the TSI has gone above 20. So it's, uh, you know, while there's some similarities to a stochastics, this is not a stochastics, just so we're clear. And um, if I pulled up the uh, the data and the settings, you could see, if you're sitting there saying, oh, it's just a stochastics. No, this is all the, the variables in here and uh, very different, okay? Uh, so these are built by a 25-year quant engineer, professional trader, uh, mad scientist, great guy, et cetera. So this to me is looking very interesting on ETH. And so you might buy a, a position in Ethereum here, and then I would add to it when the signal line goes from red to green. And here's the thing too, guys, here's why you need these in your arsenal. You can set alerts on these. So I'm gonna set an alert on the signal line when it's crossing up into green. Okay, so when, when it becomes green. All right, so you can do that on these. And uh, then similarly, down here on the trend indicator, when you get a key and a bell, the key means, hey, the new trend may be forming. The bell is your buy signal. And we'll zoom out a bit. The uh, bag of money here is your sell signal, take profits. And then you wait for a new key and a new bell and a number sequence. So here we saw several instances of these profit sequences where I went from key to bell to bag of money, key to bell to bag of money, and then boom. So in the bull market, these are great because they really do continue on and uh, you'll see multiple cycles of that. So what are we getting now? We don't yet have it green or in, so you want to wait for this. You can also set alerts on the trend indicator. And right here, when the next bell happens, I'm going to do it once per bar close because I want to know every time ETH has a new bell, because for me, that's the final confirmation. It's a buy. So we do have other signals and we do have other things we look at like we have in the trade success checklist. So again, this candle is above the 50 day EMA, very bullish. Do we have a rocket? I don't see one. Is the ATR gone green? In this case, the average true range is still bearish, but I also wanna have an alert on this to know when that turns bullish. So here, real simple, turn that red one to a rocket. And the next time ETH goes into that mode on a daily basis, that'll give us a, uh, a signal. Okay, so very important. And um, you know, there's no one indicator, although we are working on putting all of ours together. You know, there's no one indicator that's going to tell you it's time to buy or sell. Okay, it is going to be much more powerful to uh, learn how to use these and uh, use that trade success checklist. Because after you do it a few times online, you can do it in your head, right? So ERI, green up arrow, pretty simple. Now, in case you're new to this, and you're just seeing this for the first time, by the way, the uh, the ERI, let me turn off the uh, average true range. There are two versions of the ERI. If those of you are saying that arrow is cute, but it can't be very effective, um, the arrow is the visual for people who are newer. The actual indicator is this. Okay, so do you see these vertical green lines and red lines? They correspond with the green arrow and the red arrow. And the red arrow um, called the market top exactly on Bitcoin, both of them on a monthly time frame. It called the exact bottom on Bitcoin. Every market bottom, every four, only four times it's ever triggered at the market bottoms. The This is an accidental discovery. It's called the early reversal indicator because, hence the name, it'll be an early signal that it's time to get in and we're watching behavior of the big money whales and institutions. So I'm not gonna go into what all this means and the colors, there's some quant work in here. There's a Keltner band stuff you can't see, but you don't want to look at this necessarily uh, because I'm the co-creator. I do look at that, but all you need to worry about is the little green arrow. Okay. It's kind of like peeling back the curtain uh, so you can see the Wizard of Oz behind there. Right? We have both, you get both versions of that. Okay. The ERI, uh, the ERI uh, arrows and the ERI oscillator. 
okay? Just so you're aware of that. ERI indicator uh, and the ERI oscillator. But you don't need to learn how to the, look at the oscillator. We just do the green arrow. The point is, when you get these aligning, we used to call it the three kings, ERI, TSI, and the signal line, or the three musketeers, or whatever we called it. But the fourth one is the, if we have all four aligning, so our mantra is ERI, TSI, signal, and the bell. And if you get all four of those, you should be good to go in the trade. This is looking very good to me, by the way. ETH, uh, I think, does push higher, and it's breaking out of some trend line resistance, so that's uh, interesting to me. All right, so look for uh, higher uh, prices on ETH. Let's take a look at some of the pairs here with ETH BTC. Looks okay. Saw some buy pressure come in here. It's still being digested. Uh, Sol BTC has had a nice rise here. Sol BTC looking very strong, and then Sol ETH uh, looks very similar, although it's all red on the radar. Here's a good indication where I would not be going long anything if we were all red on the radar. This means it's overbought. This is a modified stochastics, and you don't need to look at these, but this is due to roll back on Sol ETH. Now, Sol BTC is a little more bullish daily time frame. So I would probably put my money on one of them. It would be Sol BTC here. Okay. And uh, how high could it go? What do we have? Let's open this back up. Do we have a nice trend channel? It looks like we do have a nice trend channel forming. And these are nice to draw on there just to kind of give us an idea where things could go. So, you know, if we wanted to just get an idea where would this potentially go, we could have 70% gain on this uh, Solana Bitcoin right in this trading range. So where we might see some resistance, likely see some resistance at this sort of old high there. And that would be a little bit less. So that would be, you know, 25%. But that's still a nice little trade there for you guys. Okay. So uh, not financial advice, but those of you trading these alternate pairs, you could try uh make some money on that on some bounces. Uh, just to skim down through what I'm looking at here, we've got the total market cap. We look at that in more detail tomorrow. More information is at moonstream.io slash m3. Uh, deep dive into the total market cap, the DXY, uh, the kind of the bigger picture, a little bit longer class, and do give trade alerts in that uh, Moonstream Active Trader class. Again, you can find out more here at uh, moonstream.io. I already showed that to you, uh, and slash moonstream.io slash M3. So I can see many of you are uh, M3 members that are here, plus you get to, uh, you get to interact with us live on the classes here. So you get special invites to this class. So uh, please do have a look at that. This is my highest level live training. You get access to me 24-7. I do updates daily in the Signal chat. And we do this uh, class just like this, a little bit deeper dive on Wednesdays. Total market cap, we'll not look, uh, look at that right now. Um, Sol USD, um, by the way, um, <clears throat> still in this trend channel. Let's see, this is Sol Bitcoin. How did that uh, jump around there? Let me move that here. So Sol, these are looking similar. Solana, you know, it's from the time that I originally recommended it at $35 back in August of 2021, it's just been on a tear. And of course it pulled back in that bear market we had, but we are looking really good on Sol though. This chart looks very favorable, breaking above prior resistance. So Solana looking very strong here, you guys, not just against ETH, but against the dollar. So if that's more of your style, I would suggest this is in due for continued upside. We've got the, where's the ERI of the, uh, the rest of our indicators are green. So, he, but just, just shows the power of the early reversal indicator, you guys. Okay. So we got it. It, it triggered right here. Great. Great signal. ERI right there coming out of this bottom. I, I figured 80 would hold. I know some people were putting limit buy orders in at $60 all the way down here. I'm like, I would not wait for that. Sol is going to go higher. We have this big buy block. This is part of our ERI Pro. We'll have the Pro Pack indicators out later. And essentially ERI triggered there. And then we had the TSI a little bit later. So you know, you could have entered here early on this on basically trend support, got in a bit early, added to the position right in this range, right? Because we had the TSI going green and above 20. And then now it looks very strong with the signal line also turning green back here on the 28th. And so, and then also, then we have the bell as of today, Solana printing a bell on the daily. We have the our mantra is intact, four kings, ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. And we have that nice upward slope. This is the other nuance 
on this trend indicator, when you see a slope on that green line of 45 degrees or more, that tells me there's a lot coming in. Money's flowing into this versus back in here where that slope was just kind of not quite 45 degrees and it went sideways. So there's a nuance for you that uh, you guys can uh, put into practice. From there, uh, we can continue to look at some of the other indicators just to see we have ATR still red. Uh, I imagine that goes green soon. And we haven't talked about our other indicators, the uh, volatility index. Those are mostly I use that on this four hour chart. So let's take a look at Bitcoin and ETH. Uh, Bitcoin hitting resistance, by the way, not surprisingly, right in this level here, which we could see on this four hour chart. Uh, overbought of uh, the uh, TSI is uh, strong for showing overbought conditions and this volatility index in this overbought zone, great for when it comes down below 80, it's a sell signal. Similarly, when it comes up above the red line, that's another confirming signal that price will go higher. So we saw that trigger right down in here along with the ERI TSI and uh, and the signal line, okay? So actually the ERI I don't have turned on. In the shorter time frames, I use the ERI uh, less and but you can see how if you're swing trading intraday let me open this up so you can see that or looking for an ideal optimal entry on bitcoin and um, <clears throat> we'll go back to that headline but essentially it changes the bars colors because that way you don't have to actually have this thing open the point i'm trying to make is this when the volatility index goes down in this red zone, the volatility is is due to expand again. So when it breaks above back into black, typically coincides, especially when it coincides with some of the other indicators, bullish. So we had it, sometimes it fakes out here, but this time with the second and third time, especially here's another nuance, you guys, if you start to see higher lows. Now, most of you are not active traders, that's okay. But uh, these are other signals if you are a swing trader and you wanted to catch these uh, swing trades because this was a nice one right here on uh, Bitcoin. All right, so 13, 14% when you're trading, if you're trading with margin. But here we're overbought on that. I think uh, another alert I'd want to be aware of is as with all of our indicators, you can set alerts, just right click on that, add alert. And I want to go, I want to do a little differently. I want to go crossing down 80 Right, so that means when price, when this green line crosses, crosses down below 80, that's when it turns black. And that's when we mean that this is coming back down. Okay, so we saw that back in here when price went down. Very accurate, you guys. Uh, simple as far as these indicators go, but it caught this rollover back in here. So here's the thing, and I want to call your attention to that. We Now, it can stay overbought for a while, but it has stayed overbought for a while. See this whole region in here? And back in here, it was up there for a while, but uh, then it rejected. Also, we should keep in mind drawing this trend line out. So the four hour is, is very telling. A lot of traders trade it. This is a likely rejection point on Bitcoin. So I'm going to set an alert here at 44.3 because... You know, all it means is that either they're taking it higher or it's a uh, a scam wick. They're going to liquidate some traders. Some of this might have been a short squeeze too. I just honestly, guys, I'm feeling this is this is going to roll over. That's what I feel. All right. So if ETH looks good, Bitcoin's not great. Wouldn't getting into ETH or alts be risky, uh, Jerry? Not so not necessarily because the the Bitcoin trade has been played. The money's going to start flowing, in my opinion, into ETH and the alts because that's the next narrative. And um, I think Solana will get its own ETF, maybe even this year. They'll do they'll do uh, ETH next, but Solana is, is a very strong player and BlackRock, you know, they want to make money. I think those three by the end of this year. So that's my prediction. Uh, let's see, let me come back to, there was that news story that popped up here and where did that go? Let's see, notifications and not that one, the alerts. This is the hot list news. And where was that? It's usually here. Okay, we can ignore that. But by the way, this is also the problem is the Dow is hitting all time highs. It just keeps going higher. And uh, at some point that thing's gonna run out of steam. All right, so this is Sol Link get big, get set for big moves as altcoins prepare to soar. Um, now for the record, I'm fully invested right now. I got back in a few days ago, but I'm playing the bounce. Uh, I'll be selling half 
and the resistance. And maybe even today, I'm going to look at that and I'm watching the shorter time frames. Solana monthly transaction volume. So the reason Solana is so strong is that they are uh, the they are ha they're pushing more volume through the, uh, the the Ethereum bridge than Ethereum, and so the that that's big, that's huge. Lots of developers, a lot of use because the transaction costs are so low, and so Solana is going to be a big mover this year. Let's see. Um, former Solana Labs members form and something shop. Not going to look at that. Uh, Solana link set for big moves. We'll look at this. And then I'll look at that last Bitcoin headline that came in. Then we'll look at some hot movers. So uh, Sol link set for big moves as all coins prepare to soar. And analysts predicts that Sol will rise to 333. I think it goes much higher than that, you guys. Uh, link is good. It's just uh, it's waiting. We're watching Link. We've got alerts set on that on our N3 Active Trader class. We also have a watch list and a portfolio and um, trading picks. And you want to be in that class. So uh, check that out. Let's see. Solana Road to 333. We can look at that. Uh, you know, everyone else's analysis, generally not all that groundbreaking. Um, let's see what we see ourselves. Always trust your own analysis. Having a nice push here. This does look good. Let me look at it on a weekly time frame before we jump back in there. Okay. Well, I mean, this is a uh, very interesting little flag. The pennant here is the term is breaking out of a pennant. So that's a bullish move, you guys. Uh, I think um, I think Bitcoin's at resistance and we I'm going to be careful with that. Uh, I think money is going to flow. Profits will flow into these uh, alts here in the near term, at least the short, short term. The point I wanted to look at, where do we see Solana going? Uh, God, has come so far already, you guys. But on our longer term time frames, let me move the ERI out of the way. And there, I have another chart that we we watch in the other class. But essentially, if we put a long-term Fibonacci on it, let's just see where that takes us. If it will let me do it here, from here down to there. I mean, 330 is, um, that's sort of an odd number. I mean, if we're going to break the old high at 266, then I think... 426, 688, $1,000 Solana. All of this is possible. Solana could 10X. Longer, longer term, if you agree, uh, there's an interesting analysis out there of why Solana should always be worth 15%, give or take, of ETH. If ETH goes to 15K, that puts Solana at 3,000. Uh, I'm not saying that will happen, but you know we are, this is a, it's a very strong chart here, this former support here around uh, 80 when that broke it became strong resistance we have now confirmed this breakout pushed up above 80 sold off tested it we've breaking above this trend line saw looks good i think it goes at least 130 from here and in the near term all right so let's keep going and see what else we see anything else you guys want to look at uh let's see maria says yes i i, I do think it's a good time to own solana i'm holding a bunch of my ira uh, these are favorable patterns here. The 21-day EMA and the 50 are turning higher after finding support right on that 50-day EMA. That's an exponential moving average. So this very bullish uh, chart here, we have a bell. We have a fresh bell. Solana, to me, is a buy at this point today. I would ride that over the next few days. That looks good to me. Uh, all of our indicators are uh, in favor to that. Not financial advice, just showing you how powerful our indicators are as a useful tool. Not here to shill those on you guys, but I'm going to be honest. It's You are at a disadvantage by not having these. So do, if you're not already in the M3 Active Trader, go here to cryptomastery.org, get signed up. They're $100 a month for all seven indicators, including the radar, which is a bonus. That's how you're going to know the market top is in and uh, what we're going to be talking about. That's how why we developed that. If you sign up for six months, you get a month free. Uh, definitely worth it. That's the cost of one bad trade. All right. So about three months ago, Doge packs have, but have been going down. Is it better to sell even without profits? Uh, Maria, let's take a look at that. Yeah, I can't, can't give uh, specific financial advice. We can certainly look at the charts and uh, give you a better idea. Uh, Dogecoin in general, though, I'm not a big fan of. It doesn't have any utility or use. The reason that this narrative is sort of dead is the only thing that can save Doge is if Elon, which is remote, if Elon puts it into Twitter X as a payment rail, but that functionality is not there yet. And there are 
fairly large holders of Doge that could be dumping. To be honest, there's no reason to hold Doge right now. If you if you wanted to keep a little bit of it in case it goes higher, but um, Elon is unlikely to put Doge in to Twitter. Here's why. Um, <clears throat> X.com, the new name of Twitter, used to be his payment platform. Not everyone knows this. It was X.com. He and Peter Thiel got together. Peter Thiel owned PayPal. They merged so they could both survive the financial crisis. And of course, that was a good decision. Uh, it's very highly, it's highly likely he's building his own payment rails into Twitter X to monetize that. And uh, that was the plan all along. Uh, Doge here has some, um, my opinion is, is no reason to hold on to it. Will it pump later during shitcoin mania? Possibly. This chart does not look very exciting to me. To be honest, I would, uh, if it were me, not financial advice, I would sell it. And uh, you can always buy back later, but there's really no reason. You're, the opportunity cost of holding Doge here and not holding other coins that will go higher uh, is is high. Let's see. Packs I'm not familiar with. And so let's just make sure it's a crypto. Paxos. Um, I know I saw the guys from Paxos speak at the Bitcoin conference. This is fairly thinly traded. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be holding this. No. There's no uh, no reason to. It's all red on the radar uh, indicators. This is just so thinly traded here. Um, let's see. Is it on a different exchange? Might have more volume. Not much. I don't know. I, I'd say no. Is this a stable coin? I'm not familiar with this. Uh, and I don't I don't like it at all. Just on the charts. So sorry, I may have had some bad advice there. Uh, so Avi is a good project. I do like Avi. Let's look at the charts. However, mm, not great. It's below the 21 and 50 day EMA. It's sort of rolling over here. Charts don't look good. You know, this is Avi is okay, but it's it's not part of it's not a sexy narrative it's uh there's a lot of DeFi out there um ave is just sort of low volume the there are no so there are here's the thing though our indicators are sort of ticking up again i think there's better opportunities but there's an eri okay we have a tsi going green all right sure let me see i want to make sure i'm not covering that uh okay good uh i want to make sure my video is not covering it. the tsi is green so we got two on the checklist we've got a signal line green uh we don't have a key and a bell but overall all right yeah see that so i mean this chart uh, it's bearish on the weekly chart that looks to me like it's rolling over and it's not i wouldn't buy it here if you have some i'd probably sell half if you wanted to hold on to it depending how long you've been holding it but uh, there's far better opportunities out there, uh, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so sure, we can look at AVAX. And then let's look at some hot movers. And uh, then we'll wrap up. Uh, okay, we've got, we've got, just so you can see this, you guys, looks like you have some new faces here in our active trader list. We've got a bunch of these in the buy zone. We have our hot list, our warm list. We've got a bunch of coins we're watching, uh, including some that have done very well here, like Say and Sui. So we've been watching those. So uh, keep an eye out. Uh, for that class, love to see you uh, join us there in uh, the M3 classes tomorrow. Definitely some lots of alpha being dropped in there. Avalanche. <clears throat> okay, weekly time frame. I do like that the 21 day is crossing the 50. We have a buy block here. So we have strong support on AVAX. It is a good project, but we have this e the e TSI, rather, the trend strength indicator weakening down below 80 and this same pattern. See what happened back here? A lot of these coins have the same similar personalities or their own personalities. So these patterns are worth noting. Okay. So um, AVAX here, let's take a look at the daily. Uh, daily looks slightly stronger, actually. So maybe a couple days of push up, but, um, you know, maybe have 40% back up to this old sell block. And there's a little bit of room on the TSI, probably run out of steam in the next few days going into the end of the week. But we have the signal line green and we have a bell. So I'm a, I'm not emotional with it. I do like this chart. I would have liked it more if there was an early reversal indicator right here. Because here's why. The ERI is sort of following the footsteps of giants. And what it shows is when there's enough volume and force to push prices higher from a below a point on the oscillator to above the 20 line. And essentially that shows 
uh, buying and, and buying inside of it, not just money flow, but speed velocity. And we have some metrics in there and it's just, it was an accidental discovery. So where we, where we ignore it though, and the reason we use it with the TSI, it's very important is here you see two fake outs. We had a bullish engulfing candle and an ERI, but we would not have taken that trade because the TSI, the trend strength indicator, never broke above 20. That's the confirmation. Unless we had other strong indicators that that was uh, aligning and we didn't. Signal line was red, trend indicator is also red. So that was a no. Here, yeah, we had an ERI on the 50-day EMA. I would be inclined to take that trade and in all fairness, it did break above 20. And uh, that was one of the rare instances that it got it wrong. Uh, but this was around the ETF uh, dumpage. So um, so basically what I would have wanted to see is an ERI arrow down here. Well, here's, okay, here's the thing. There was one, a faint one. And I have my arrows turned off on these. Okay, so there was, see this green line? That is a less ideal ERI and I can see why because it didn't get that as low as I would normally hope. I have the arrows turned off on mine for the less ideal uh, TSI. If I go into the settings, however, I can turn it back on and you can see that just so we can see that. Uh, yes, it caught it. And uh, my my settings are sort of off on that because I customized my wait. There it is. It was there. <laughs> then it went away. Hold on. Down here, I uh, use small arrows. Small arrows are sort of less ideal. Okay, so now we see that ERI on there, the small one, and then the TSI signal and bell. So I think Avi Avalanche, sorry, Avalanche here, good for a nice bounce. It's back above the 2150 day EMA. Sure, I would play the bounce, but I, I don't think it breaks through necessarily this old high on the first attempt. Typically, it's the third or fifth attempt on these breakouts. So uh, so let me draw this. So I'd look for, I'd, I'd sell around 49.50, take some profits, because more than likely what it'll happen, these patterns play out time and time again. It'll push up, it'll calm down, put in a higher low, and then it'll push up, break out, and then a retest. And so these are these patterns that you want to look for. And uh, we cover that a lot in our M3 Active Trader class. So that's all we have time for there. Let's jump over to the... Um, the uh, trading view hot movers uh, for some reason mine uh, has disappeared so by the way if you are watching on youtube please subscribe and like this you know we do cover a lot of cool things and uh, we're gonna see if we can find some trading opportunities for you trading view hot movers now you can google that and let's see top u.s stocks top percentage gainers uh, i guess i have to do this we can do uh, on the uh the, the heat map here this is the Okay, sorry guys. I, I normally that comes right up. So crypto heat map trading view. Okay, we've got that one. I'll let you guys look at this while I'm digging up the uh, hot movers. All right, so there's a couple lot of versions of this. Gives you a nice idea of what's going on in the markets. Trading view crypto hot movers. Yeah, and on this on these maps, by the way, if you want to just turn off ones, uh, Bitcoin is plus 0.17%. Nothing happening. So if you click on this zero, it'll just erase all those gray ones. We have Ethereum. Money is flowing into Ethereum. Uh, we do look at Bitcoin dominance, ETH dominance, and things like that in tomorrow's class, along with the DXY. So uh, DXY, a very important relationship with Bitcoin. So Solana Ethereum up 3%. Uh, Lido as well. Do like Lido. And uh, XRP is down. XRP is dead. I mean, they they won their lawsuit. It's just uh, people the, the people don't really care. Near protocol up 5%. Might want to look at that. But um, in terms of the uh, hot movers, let's look at near really quick because that is one I'm interested in. And uh, made some money on that last push higher. And so I've been waiting to get back in. So near is a great project. It looks great here. It looks a lot like the AVAX chart. Back above the 21 and 50 day EMA, we talk about uh, we, the analogy there is uh, ice in our M3 active trader class, uh, hence the hat, a two levels of ice. The This is the thin ice here, this, this orange line, the 21 period EMA. The green one is that thicker ice. And if you have 
the thin ice on top of thick ice, just like on a frozen lake, that's what you want to see. Two layers of ice, thick ice, you're more likely to not fall through and drown because as we saw up here, you know, the thin ice broke you underwater, try to pop your head up and you couldn't because the ice wasn't strong enough. And then you're drowning, you're drowning below the thick, drowning for weeks here, a week or so. And now we're back above the ice. Good to go. We're all dried off and uh, we're good to go. ERI, TSI above 20, signal line green, key. We're getting a key and the bell will be next. So I'd want to see how that uh, plays out tomorrow. But I would say this is worth getting into uh, for a nice little bounce. How high could it go? Let's take a look. Again, I see money flowing into alts and not Bitcoin. What do your eyes tell you? Bitcoin's not moving. Alts are moving. You could see a nice 50% bounce on near protocol here, you guys. And uh, that beats a sharp stick in the eye. Beautiful. All right. So I would uh, make a mental note. I am going to make a mental note. I may go buy some. So um, with that, let's just see. We looked at something last week called ASM. That is just sort of up and to the right. Assemble protocol. Not familiar with it, but what a beautiful chart. It's still very cheap. It's a uh, very low volume, though. And uh, <clears throat> Marty, can you find this? It's on crypto. It's on Coinbase. It's interesting. Okay. Uh, the rest of these we most of us can't use. MEXC. But uh, isn't that interesting? Assemble protocol. Well, um, and that's up quite a bit since last week when we noted it and found it on the hot movers. All right, so we'll keep an eye on that. You've got uh, DYDX also looking good based on our indicators. A little bit red on the radar. The daily looks good. Trying to break above here. TSI going green. Yes, the signal line green key in a bell. DYDX is um, looks ripe for a swing trade but not easy to find you have to find it on one of these offshore exchanges these are all micro caps of course a lot of these underwater uh, but you know many of these are sort of these alts are looking like they're ready to turn up it's just the key thing is you need to see a higher a higher high not a lower high <clears throat> so those rolling over uh, not great uh, say is one we've been watching love say uh have been talking about this for a week a lot of people have but look at this on say right in here eri tsi yes about to get a uh, signal crossover so say looking really good here also it is available on coinbase not financial advice but our indicators are lining up and uh say is a very strong project that uh, they're, they're saying could be a solana killer it's not but it could drive uh, quite a bit higher. It's under a dollar here, you guys. So I have alerts set on that. The other one that's similar to that, we'll talk about tomorrow. Now, these are just some, some micro caps. Um, Polygon, not looking so great. See, lower highs. I'm surprised by this, but that's what the charts tell us. Polygon, kind of out of favor. You know, it'll come back at some point, potentially. Um, some of these other ones we're watching. I'm just going to skim down the list. Again, near protocol, looking good, though. I'll move that up. It's not a micro cap, so I'll put in the hot movers. I do like this chart on the air. Our indicators are aligning. The four musketeers are there. ERI, TSI signal. The bell's not quite there, but I imagine we'll have it unless we get a huge sell-off. I uh, can take a quick look at comp. Looks pretty boring to me. Take a look at chain link real quick, and then back to the hot movers. Uh, where did I put that in here? These are just some of the ones I'm watching down. I have near in my Coinbase watch list. Uh, let see where... Chainlink, there it is. Chainlink looks better. Okay. Yeah, Chainlink, uh, I like a bit. It's all, but here, the radar is mostly red. Even though my daily is bullish, I, I just, there's a lot of overhead resistance here, and that's going to be tough. I have alerts already set for when it gets above this resistance right here around $17. But for now, to me, I think, let's see. Usually these break on the third or fifth attempt. We have once and twice and three times, four times. I think Chainlinks does break above 17 this time. And here's the thing, though. I would rather buy it on the retest because, again, they usually break up and then they retest that new level as support and then they go higher. So we'll be watching that around 17. I'd rather buy it on the retest. That's a lot stronger than buying the breakout because, again, these usually retest. Okay. Anything else you guys want to see? Here's that hot list, by the way, the hot movers. And uh, where did it go? I guess I didn't click on it. Crypto gainers today. Uh, yeah. All right. This is it. Hot market coins. So what do we have? I look for a certain level. We've got um, a volume. This is too low. Observer. Nervos Network, 64 million. Okay, smart contracts. Everyone's doing smart contracts. Not terribly excited about it, but we'll look at it. We have something called Turbo. I did see BTT, BitTensor. We do want to look at that. That's Tau. 
Okay, uh, that one we should look at. That was a hot mover recently. And Citus, okay, Citus moving. There are probably more in here. PRQ, I think, is, uh, is AI. That's probably all we have time for. I don't recognize many of the other ones. There might be some gold in here, you guys, uh, gold movers. But let's take a look. Citus here. Okay, kind of breaking out. That does look interesting. And um, I want to say this is related to SUI, the ecosystem. A bit overbought on the trend indicator, but does look like it's breaking out here on that time frame. So micro cap, it's called CDIS. I'm going to add that to one of my watch lists. I'll put it in my speculative DeFi and our uh, crypto mastery uh, list just in case. Okay, so there's one for you to keep an eye on. Potentially, uh, let's look at BitTensor. This has been moving. It's a um, yeah, it's related to, I'm not even going to talk about what it does, but so the chart, here's why. The chart tells us everything we need to know. Breaking out onto new highs is that this could be price discovery zone, which is very exciting if it is, because typically these will run and continue to go higher. Let's just see if we have anything with longer price history. Uh, we don't. So um, the final answer is going to be on uh, coin market cap or coin gecko. So we want to take a look at that. Now let's see BTT. Uh, what are we doing here? Tau. It's called bit tensor. What happened? It's yeah, it's a little confusing because the name and BTT is, isn't it BTT? Let's go back here. Bit tensor is Tau. Okay. Yeah. That's a tricky one. A little confusing. All right. While that's loading, uh, I've crashed my browser here. <clears throat> Hang on, you guys. I'll go there. I'll go that like that. I'll cheat, leave that one. Bit tensor, this one. So that's on crypto.com if you're able to do that. The last one I'll look at is this uh, Nervos Network. And we're just looking at what our indicators are telling us. They paint the whole story. This is a pump and dump. It's going to come back down. Um, the it's outside. Here's the other thing you can use for your take profits. Your use the third standard deviation Bollinger band. If it's up above that, this is going to sell off. I guarantee this is going to sell off. This is on uh, margin trading accounts, BitGet, Binance, KuCoin, MEXC. This is those margin traders pumping it up. Uh, I would stay away from that one uh, completely. Maybe we have time for one more. Since that was a quick one, top crypto crypto gainers. What is Cult Dow? Wait a minute. How much? No, it's too too small volume. So we know right away we don't want to look at this. But just to be sure, uh, you know, look at this chart. This is this is micro micro shitcoin level. Uh, yeah, but you know, look here's the thing. Bullish ERI breaking above the twenty one and fifty. The TSI is green. Signals about to go green. It does look pretty good. Not going to lie, if I were trading uh, shitcoins today, I'd probably buy some of this. It's just these things are such low volume, you never know. But we have our indicators in alignment. So if any of you are out there degen, uh, trading degens, the, there you go. I'm going to add it to my speculative degen list just to keep an eye on that. Okay, everybody, I think that's all we have time for. Any other questions? Anything at all? We do cover this in more detail tomorrow, including the uh, total market cap. And uh, also, again, the DXY, stuff like that. And uh, start looking at some other. We have a list of AI coins we look at. Uh, we've got our own watch list and uh, some other ones that was just sort of been on the radar for a while. And uh, but that's about all we have time for. The charts are a little clearer in that class because you don't have me on the front of it. This is more for the uh, the indicators here and uh, the people joining on YouTube. Again, please, please do like the video. I know it sounds kind of a. Uh, lame to be asking but uh, we're trying to get this out in front of more people and that's why we do these so anyway i hope that helps everybody and again you can find out more about all the stuff we have including some free things at moonstream.io just go down to the bottom uh, sign up for a free newsletter by the way uh, our team does a great job with that every monday sort of digest the news on mondays and then you can sign up for these classes here where you can get invited live the uh, trader success checklist that i showed you and some other things, report I wrote called Past and Future for Bitcoin. Originally, it was called Blood in the Streets when I was telling people to get back into crypto and the depths of the bear market, December 2022. 
and people thought it was crazy, but uh, we were right. Five mistakes investors make in crypto and a report called Blockchain is Growing. You can find out all about that and uh, some other stuff we've done here recently. So if you're new, check us out and look forward to talking to you guys next week. Thanks, everyone.